Silk Central Test Manager, Test Plans and Execution Definitions Overview. In this recording, we'll cover the test plan layout, containers and folders, and test definitions and details. We'll also take a look at the execution definition section, the layout, and the detail tabs that go along with your executions. One additional resource you may want to consult is the Silk Central Test Manager Source Control Profile Setup Recording. Let's start with a test plan overview. We'll take a look at the layout, containers and folders, and the details around setting up a test definition. Start by navigating to the test plan tab in Silk Central Test Manager. On the left, you should find a tree view where the root node is the name of your project. Underneath the root, you'll be able to add containers, folders, and test definitions. A container is the highest level folder and it resides directly under the project level. Containers have special properties different from folders. On the right, you can see some examples of this. I've selected one of my containers. and On the right, I can see the name, the description of the container. I can also see things like which product is uh, related to this specific container as well as which source control profile is related to this, along with some other properties. Then under a container, you can organize your tree however you'd like. So you can have folders inside of folders and test definitions accordingly. Now this view can be toggled between a dashboard view and a detail view. Right now we're looking at the detail view on the right, which shows information related to whatever I have selected in the tree view on the left. You can also toggle to the dashboard view I mentioned where you can see the status of all the items in the tree view. So in line with my customer quote system container, I can see I have 11 tests that are passing, 8 that are failing, and 3 that haven't been scheduled to run yet. As I expand down my tree, I can see the individual details per folder and per test definition. There's also a grid view for the same type of information. Let's go back to the detailed test plan view. Once you've created your test container, again you can create folders and test definitions under them. Test definitions can be of all types. They can be automated tests for functional testing, they can be automated performance tests, they can be unit tests, they can be manual tests, etc. To create a test definition, you find the location in the tree where you'd like to add it. Simply right click and choose New Child Test Definition. From here you can give it a name, a description, and also select a type. The type's important because the options that follow will be specific to that test type. And as you can see, we support a wide variety of test types. So I'm going to cancel out of this and let's take a look at some tests that I've already got created. Auto quote main page. On the right I can see details, so again name, description, status of the test list, last time it executed, and build number who created it, when they created it, and who changed it last. If it's an automated test, I can see properties of where that test is located. In this case, this happens to be a silk test script, so I can see where in my source control profile this actual test script is located and the settings that I've selected. There are also additional options such as data-driven functionality and what constitutes success pass and failure information. If your test is a manual test or it was derived after a manual test, you can see the specific test steps. Here you can see the name of each step, the action description of each step, and the expected result. You can also have attachments such as screenshots, links, etc. For manual tests, these can be manually built inside of the tool or they can be imported using our import utility that comes with Silk Central Test Manager. Some other tabs you'll notice, the Attributes tab. Attributes are used for several different functions. You can sort based on attributes of a given test. You can build test definition uh, executions from attributes, and you can also report on them. What attributes are avail available for your project are defined by you up in the Settings tab on the Workflow toolbar. There's a Parameters tab option if you're using the data-driven functionality. 
There's also an assigned requirements tab where you can see all the requirements associated with the particular test I have selected in my tree. You can also add and remove those requirements that are associated on the far right. Any particular attachments related to this test can be seen here. Any executions that this test is a part of. So for example, I can see this particular test case is, is a part of several different execution definitions. Usability tests, compliance tests, regression tests, code coverage, etc. This is a good example of the reusability of Silk Central in that one test can be used in a wide variety of test groupings. In the Runs tab, I can see detailed information about each time this test was executed, and I can drill down to the step or result file level. I can also see issues related to this test and the status. I can see an audit history of everything that's happened to this test, starting at the bottom. I can see when this test was created and every modification since that time to the test itself, including who made the change and the time and date stamp. And you also have a data set tab, which again is related to the data driven option. So at this point, we've looked at the test plan overview, how it's laid out, test containers and folders, and the test definition level and the tabs related to them. Now let's take a look at the execution definition area. On your workflow toolbar, navigate to the execution tab. The layout of executions is very similar to that of the test plan. You have a tree view on the left, which is where you organize all of your different execution definitions, which are just logical groupings of your test cases that live in the test plan. On the right, you can toggle similarly, similarly in the execution area as you did in the test plan. So I can see a dashboard view of the passing failing status of all these executions, or I can see a detail view. Let's take a look at some details of these. So I'll click on one of my execution definitions. And on the right, I can see the name and the description of this execution. I can also see which test container the test will come from that live in this execution. I can see which version and build this execution starts with in terms of which version of my application I'm testing. I can set a priority. I can see the status the last time it executed and who ran it. On the next tab, I can see which tests are actually in this execution. And there are two ways to add tests to this bundle. One is manually, choose the radio button, and on the far right, you'll get a small view of the test plan. Here you can hand select which tests you'd like to have in this execution. So I'll choose a few by clicking on the blue arrows. You can also build execution definitions by filter. When doing this, you use filters you've set up for your project to automatically build what goes in this execution. So here I can say, use my compliance test filter, and it automatically goes to the test plan and finds all tests with the compliance attribute. <clears throat> there are also setup and cleanup options that you can specify that should be run before the rest of the tests and after the rest of the tests. There are several ways to actually run executions. One way is by scheduling them. This is very similar to scheduling a recurring appointment in most email systems. So I can state, say starting with a particular date and time, I want to run this execution every seven days, three hours and some number of minutes perhaps and then I tell it for what duration. So indefinitely, till I've run this execution X number of times and, or until I've hit a particular date. You can also specify exclusions from this schedule. Another option for running tests is more ad hoc. So you can choose no schedule and simply right click the execution and choose run. Here you'll see several options. For example, I can say run all the tests in this execution 
I can say run only the tests that failed last time or only the tests that haven't been executed since a particular build of our application or run only the tests that have had issues fixed since the last execution. I can also specify the build that I'll be running against currently. A few other options. On the deployment tab, you'll assign the location or the person that will be executing tests. So if you have automated tests, you want to come in and choose either specific machines to run on or choose keywords that machines will have so that Silk Central can make a decision of where to run the tests. Or you have the option to run in a VMware lab manager environment. So you would specify a configuration that Silk Central would use to run the test on. If there are manual tests, you would come in and select people to assign them to. So in this case, I could assign tests to Kay Gundler. If Silk Central is hooked up to your email system, that person or the people on that team will get an email letting them know that they've had tests assigned to them. Several other options. You can specify dependencies between executions. You can also set up email notifications. So if you want to be notified when a test is completed or when um, your execution is completed and some tests haven't passed, you can hand select those here. You can also come to the Runs tab and see every time this test is executed and view down to the detailed result files. And you can also see what's currently running, including the manual tests where you can pick up right from this location to continue. So we've just looked at the execution definition area, the layout, and the detailed information related to each execution. This has been Silk Central Test Manager, Test Plans and Execution Definitions Overview.